We're back now at 742. From the moment of the Boston Marathon bombings, a digital manhunt was underway for the terrorists. Surveillance videos and photos taken by average citizens played a huge role in the case. A watershed moment for the Internet and social media. One that Google executive chairman Eric Schmidt and Google ideas director Jared Cohen predicted. Their new book is called The New Digital Age. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you. I mean, it's all about how the digital world is changing our lives, our safety, our businesses. But let's look at it in the context of what we've all just lived through over the last week. First, the bombings themselves and then the investigation. What was the digital impact? Well, this was a terrible tragedy by any measure. And yet the digital world helped a lot. After the police sort of figured out roughly who they were, they released videotapes, and a million people looked for these people. And I'm sure that really spooked them. So these members of the yeah. digital community became quasi-law enforcement right. agents. If, if, if you're locked down in Boston, what else are you going to do? You're going to look. But it's interesting. You immediately highlight the positive. Jared, let me bring you in here, because some people might say, well, the digital world may also have been where these brothers radicalized their views, where they may, we don't know, may have learned how to build some of the devices that they eventually exploded at the Boston Marathon. There have been cases in the past where terrorists have used cell phones, a digital device, to actually detonate devices, although we don't know that here. Well, this is, of course, the, the story of technology. It, it empowers people both for good and for ill. Uh, but what we see is the number of people who want to see less violence in the world significantly outnumbers the, uh, that of the perpetrators. And they all have the ability to capture content and collectively press rewind. More witnesses, more content makes it harder for anybody willing to perpetrate an act to actually get away with it in the future. There, there is no question that that idea, that concept of putting these videos out there and all these people watching these events, not only on television, but on their computers and on their smartphones, they did help. There's a downside to that as well, because there were some people identified in photographs who turned out to have nothing to do with the crime. And by pushing send, those people were placed out there unfairly instantly. By the way, this happened in the Atlanta bombings. Right. Richard Jewell, who was ultimately exonerated, and yet his name exists in our history forever. So the fact of the matter is there is a rush to judgment online, but overall, we get to the right answer pretty quickly. Be careful. The first thing you hear may not be correct, but over time, the online world gets it right. You mentioned misidentification is not new to the digital yeah. age, but boy, the speed of the yeah, digital totally. world yeah. does change it dramatically. By the way, another little element, digital element to this, when these brothers carjacked that car right. on Thursday night, they let the driver of the car go. That driver left a cell phone in right. the car and... Well, so, Matt, one of, one of the things we talk about in, in the book is it's very difficult for terrorists in the future to not use technology. It's just the world we're, we're moving into. Uh, as they opt into technology, the room for error becomes much greater. And when you're frantic and on the run, you can't possibly uh, follow a checklist every second at every single moment. Yeah, look in the car and see if there's a cell phone there and throw it out the window because right. you know it's a tracking device. Digital fingerprints, all right? Both of these young men went online. In the case of the older brother, he had postings on YouTube talking about the jihad and jihadists. Now, is there a responsibility for people like Google to be constantly checking those things and, and alerting law enforcement? Well, the moment we hear anything that's sort of hate speech or anything inappropriate on YouTube, we take it off. And that's sort of the best we can do because there's so much coming, coming out. The fact of the matter is people are going to use all of this stuff to post their ideas, and you will see it. And maybe you get a better sense that these people are evil by looking at what they're posting. In the 15 seconds I have left, Jared, as we move to the future and in terms of crime, the digital world is a positive or a negative? We're overwhelmingly optimistic because, again, the room for error goes up whether you're a criminal or a terrorist. Uh, you have to leave a digital trail behind, and nobody can possibly be that careful, and even terrorists make mistakes. Eric Schmidt and Jared Cohen, thank you guys. And the book is called The New Digital Age.